Good afternoon, everyone. So this is part two of um, tackling the alienation strategies. There's those 17 strategies identified by Amy Baker and Paul Fine. Um, and we went through the first eight last time and we're going to cover the last nine today. So I'll give you a few minutes to see if anyone joins live so I can answer any questions. Um, and if not, I will just crack on. Um, hi, Jackie. Um, so, yeah, I'll just wait a couple of minutes to see who else comes and joins live and then I will get started. You have, just excuse me, I've got a sore throat at the moment, so my voice might go a little bit croaky, but I will keep going. I will power through. Um, uh, so, yeah, just if it does go a bit... <sighs> It's just because I've got a sore throat and I forgot to bring a drink in with me today as well. So not particularly helpful. Um, but I'm going to get through these today. And then you've got two videos um, that I'll pop, pop on YouTube as well. So that um, they're there forever. It saves you scrolling all the way down through the group. The YouTube channel is just The Nurturing Coach. And there's tons of videos on there all about narcissistic abuse parental alienation parenting all a lot there's a massive resource on there but anyway i'm gonna crack on with these so i've had really good feedback from the last ones like i say this is i haven't come up with these i'm just relaying and um, this is amy baker and paul fine who have written them uh, but it's something that i really wanted to share with you um unfortunately i can't copy or distribute without their permission so um this is the best way that i can do it um so number nine strategy number nine is confiding in the child you find that a lot in parental alienation cases because what happens is the child uh, and when there's multiple children you'll find it's usually one specific child that gets elevated into the position of of kind of like co-spouse so they take the gap that you left um and so they will find out everything they will be the ones that get pulled in the most they'll also be the ones that get used to turn the other children as well um and so this child will become an emotional confidant they'll tell them details of um, the divorce process court everything they will know it all um and obviously that's really unhealthy for children they really should one they haven't got the emotional capacity to be an equal with a parent even a parent who is um emotionally i'm going to use the word retarded because they are they're not mature enough it, the nurses are immature emotionally but these are still adult issues that they that they are wanting to confide in so it's very unhealthy that they do that so anyway how do you deal with that so first off um you would speak to the speak to the child about um anything that's going on so the, the wording that amy suggests is i may be off here but it seems like you're developing some funny ideas about me that you must be getting from somewhere else not based on what i'm telling you or what you know to be true about me you know sometimes when parents get divorced one parent may talk to the children as if they were adults and not children anymore that might feel pretty good for children to be so important and to be trusted and to have adult things shared with them. However, it also might feel scary and strange to be part of an adult conversation in their business. I'm going to respect that you are still a child, even though you are quite mature for your age, and I won't be sharing adult matters with you. I hope that if you ever hear anything about me that makes you feel uncertain from, of my love for you, all my best intentions towards your mom or dad that you come to me and check it out with me and i will do my best to explain things without burdening you too much with information so a really powerful way of explaining to the child without blame you're not blaming the other parent you're just making the point that it's might feel good for them but actually it's not not healthy and it is it can feel scary to them and help that show of empathy that you have that you can understand you know it might feel scary you might not actually want to know some of this information shows them that you understand them. that's really important when the other parent is not isn't really bothered 
about understanding the other cha the child's position and you're able to do that that's really powerful them and it just it just reinforces that inner belief of who they know is safe and who they know is not this is all reinforcing those things so strategy 10 is forcing the child to reject the targeted parent so this can start um in little ways so covid let's keep covid as an example um because that has been an opportunity for children to reject the targeted parent obviously the alienating parent will have used what's going on in the world to fear monger and to create an unsafe environment that it's not safe for you because they might be meeting people you know and terrifying them into the fact that they can see anyone else but not not that parent because for whatever reason that parent's dangerous it reinforces that narrative that that parent either doesn't care um is a risk and so it it's forcing that child into rejecting them so first suggestion is in front of the alienating parent where the child can can hear it might be hard for whatever your child's name when we stand when we're um so far apart or when we're not able to communicate or whatever's going on how about if we so that our child can feel more comfortable so make sure that your children can hear that you're making the effort if that's not possible so i always say to parents that the emails that you send will be being shown as we've just covered in the other one they will be confiding so if they're going to use that tactic of showing and confiding kind of use it to your advantage and in your emails show that you want to cooperate show that you're trying to meet them in the middle ground show that you're trying to do what's best for the child rather than putting your own needs first so in a some for the children it's um sometimes it can be hard for you to know um like who to who to turn to who to be with um i want you to know that as far as i'm concerned you do not have to choose between us i would like you to be near to both of us i'd like you to be able to have a relationship with both of us is there anything i can do to make it easier for you it's important to me that you show me your respect for me even when we're all together and i know it may be hard but it's not good or rude or for you to be it's not good for you to be rude or disrespectful towards me you probably won't feel good about yourself when you behave that way and that is so true is that children don't want to, children do not want to hate you they do not want to say nasty things about you they really don't because they are saying it about themselves really children see you as them you know there's so much research the the oedipus um theory around that the complex um and the the uh oh god i can't remember her name now electra oedipus and electra complex is all around how boys see themselves as as their father so they look to their fathers and see them as a reflection of themselves girls look to their mothers and see them as a reflection of themselves and they can fall in love with that because they're at that egotistical stage they also see it the opposite way around so boys fall in love with their mother and, and uh girls fall in love with their father because that's that's um their first try an intimate relationship so when they're having to say something nasty about their parent they're feeling that on a very personal level so you need to be aware that you've got to try and protect them from that feeling that feeling of hating themselves so where possible so sort of put aside your feelings about your ex and try and try and make it as easy for your children as possible just so that they know that they don't have to reject they do not have to reject the other parent because that means rejecting half of them and you don't want them to do that because they grow up split you know the splitting dynamic is that difficulty and seeing everything black and white and splitting is is too you know there's two different elements of splitting the splitting which is um the black and white the uh, attachment system being turned off um and then wanting wanting a relationship but not wanting a relationship because of the fear element 
means that they switch switch parts of themselves off um which goes against all evolution but also there's the other another side of splitting which is a splitting of their personality which can lead to multiple personality disorders dissociative identity disorder so it's really important that we never put children in those sort of positions because it will lead to long-term mental health problems so regardless of your feelings for the for your ex you have to remember this is this is that their parent and it's part of them and it's how they identify themselves uh, asking child trashy 11 asking the child to spy on the targeted parent again you know they can't let go they still want to control they still want to know what is going on so that either they can use it against you in some way or just feel like they've got the upper hand um and also it it reinforces the child's idea that they're important that they're special and aligns them with um the alienating parent because they're giving them this important undercover role it's all very secretive it's encouraging behaviors that actually you don't want to encourage in children we don't want them to be spying and being deceitful and all of those kind of things so it is important that it is tackled um so essentially if you see your children doing that you can say to them, I have a sense that you're looking for something. What what is it? How can what are you looking for? If you want to tell me what it is, and then you can be very um clear on so is it something that they need to see? So for example, they don't need to see court papers, they don't need to see I mean they don't it doesn't matter to me, I don't see why it matters if they see your bank statements and stuff like that. that they wouldn't understand them. I don't even understand my own bank statement half the time. So a child would never would. But it's just thinking, is this something that's appropriate for a child to see? And having that conversation with them, saying to them, this is not, it's not appropriate for you to see court papers, they're adult issues. Um, if there's something that's happened and your ex is trying to find out about you, again, if it's not something that you want your children to know, your ex has no right. And you can, you can talk to them about, um, that behaviour and that it isn't appropriate for them to to be going through people's things. They give them the example that they how uncomfortable they would feel if you were just sneaking through their things. Isn't it better to ask if you want some information? Teach them those skills. Strategy 12, asking child to keep secrets from the targeted parent. So again, like the spying, lying is not a nice quality that we want um because it, it elevates them into that position it's a them versus you kind of setup so um try not you've got to you've got to tackle it when it comes up um again they will feel guilty because they indeed down children have actually got really good morals they do understand morals and, and what is good behavior what's bad they learn it at school They'll have learnt it from you. They'll have learnt it from siblings. They'll learn it from friends. And so they know what's right and wrong. And they will feel the guilt of doing these things. So what Amy suggests is uh, discussing directly with the child. So I think you've known for a while that something was kept secret. Even though I just found out about it now. That is like keeping a secret from me. And some things are okay to keep a secret from me. Can you think of anything like that? So again, it's encouraging them to think, it's encouraging their logical brain to tap in, provide their own answers. You're encouraging independence, you're encouraging critical thinking with this. Um, but some things are not okay for, for you to have as a secret from me and repeat whatever it is you found out that they were keeping a secret. Do you know why it wasn't okay to have this as a secret from me? Wait and see if they can offer an explanation. Nine times out of 10 they will, although, alienated children if they've been really conscious they just say don't know to everything don't know don't know don't know so help them explore but don't put too much pressure on them if you feel that they're starting to get agitated because they don't know when they're you know they've got the pressure of not wanting to say the wrong thing and the other parent um kicking off against them and and then getting into trouble because they've said the wrong thing just be very aware that that's going on for them that they have a fear that they might say the wrong thing um so and then you can at that point you can share if they can't come up with anything you can say to them well 
in keeping that secret, what happened was, and, and tell them what some of the consequences might have been that, you know, you, you had you had to cancel all your plans or it cost you X amount of money because you booked a hotel or, you know, whatever it is that, that resulted from it. I'm sorry that you felt you had to keep that a secret from me. I wonder what I can do so that you don't feel you have to keep secrets from me in the future. Do you have any ideas? So at that point, it's possible that they might realise that it was the other parent and they might reveal to you, actually, the other parent made me keep a secret. So some of it's about planting seeds, about them realising that, oh God, um, I was made to do that. And I, I, yeah, you're right, I didn't want to do it and I didn't know all of that would happen. Um, they might reveal that out loud, but it might be enough that they just know it. So what you could do is you could confront the other parent in front of the child and say, you know, I think whatever the child's name was looking for some information she thought you wanted. Um, actually, that fits in well with the other one. I think they put that in the wrong place. So anyway, strategy 13, referring to the targeted parent by first name. Now, this is something that does come up quite a lot. And it's another part of that emotional cut off. So in the family systems, when you separate the narcissist is always an emotional cut off. As far as they're concerned, you're out the family, like, like a cult. You've disobeyed and now you're out. So it's the emotional cut off then has to expand to not being called mum or dad anymore. Just being called by your first name is stripping you of that role and your place in the family. Because actually, when you separate from someone, you still keep your place in that family. Just because you don't live together anymore and you're not in a relationship with the other parent, there is still a family unit. It's a separated family unit, but it's still a family unit. You're still mum or dad, but the narcissist can't handle that because it's too heavy a reminder for them of all the pain. And so they emotionally cut you off and they get the child to do that as well. So I won't go into the dynamics completely of how they do that, but there's lots of reward obviously given for that. Um, and also... They will make criticisms when they say, oh, mum or dad did this. I don't know why you call them that. They've hardly been that to you. You'd be better off calling them by their first name and then heavily rewarding them for calling you by your first name. Um, so they're saying once that uh, if that's happening to you, a way that you can um, instigate this with your um, child is... Please refer to me as mum or dad and not by my first name and I will do the same. It may, oh no, this is, sorry, this is to the um, to the alienating parent. Please refer to me as mum or dad and not by my first name and I will do the same. It may be confusing for, child's name, to have us start calling each other by our first names. Again, try and do that in front of the child so they see. To the child themselves, you could say, no matter what other people call me, to you, I will always be mum or dad. So the other thing that they do with names is that they will often get the children to call step parent mum or dad. So not only do they take um, your your title, they give it freely to someone else. And there's a lot of encouragement for the child to call that person by mum or dad and sometimes it happens completely naturally and organically for children when they've been when there's someone's been in their life consistently they can use that term in my experience with my my friends that have been in that situation as step parents there's always been a conversation around saying I'm not, I, it's lovely that you want to call me that, but I'm not actually your mum or dad. Um, and what do you think your mum or dad might feel about that? Um, because it, you know, it is, you know, the, t the title is kind of special, isn't it? And so to have someone else be called that, you've got to just talk to the children about it. So anyway, the response is that she, um, that she recommends is to mention it to the alienating parent in front of the child. So say, there must be some mix up, but the teacher, the GP, whoever, seems to think that, name a step parent, is mum or dad, not me. Let's try to be clear about this, thank you. To the child, I know you have special feelings for step parent, and it may be easier just to call him or her mum or dad, 
But for now, I would really like to be the only person that you call mum or dad. Why don't you and your step-parent come up with a special name that only you can call him or her? So that way you're not diminishing the relationship that we have, well, they have that with that person. What you're doing is saying the mum or dad title is kind of special and, and it's something that indicates that part of the family and you're fine with them giving them another special name but you'd prefer it if it wasn't that. So it's a really nice way of helping the children to know you're fine with them having a special name for them, just not that name. Uh, strategy 15, withholding medical, academic and other important information, taking your name off medical and academic documents, so that sort of thing, just the erasing from all the external activities that surround a child. So again, what it does is it it sends a very clear message to everyone else that you aren't really involved. You're not you're not relevant. You are no longer relevant in this child's life. Um, and although the although the child will be less involved in the removal of that, it's still a message that will get, will get through. Um, so when you're not told about something. Um, so say you're not told, we're obviously, we're a bit far off, but Christmas is coming. There'll be, there probably won't be because of COVID, but there might have been Christmas plays that you could have gone to, parents' evening, all of those sorts of things. When you're taken off or the information is withheld from you, you're not told it's happening or you're told late, which is a very common tactic as well, told right at the last minute when you can't possibly get there in time if you've got to travel or you can't get the day off work, you know, there's, they will very craftily make sure. So they can say they told you, which technically they have, but they haven't given you enough time to get there. Um, it means that they can go by the narrative. If mum or dad really cared, he or she would have come to your assembly. Um, and so it reinforces that narrative that, again, they don't show up. You don't show up. You don't care about them anymore. Um, you're not relevant in their lives. Um, so it what she um what she recommends saying is sometimes in divorce situations it can get complicated for everyone to keep track of both addresses and keep both parents informed. If it is all right with you, I would like to call every once in a while to make sure that I have everything I need and to see if I can be of any help. So you can say that to the alienating parent you can say that obviously you get a no but you can say that to to school to um gps just so that you are keeping up be proactive make sure that you're on the address uh list that you are and they will try can repeatedly try and take you off so check in every term every term that you're still on the list every term that you they have your details correctly um so that you can get that. And if you need to, touch base. Make sure that you are um make sure that you are being given that information and that you are um on, on all the lists, all the relevant lists as being someone who's entitled to that information. Obviously check legal guidance that you are, but if you've got PR, pretty much is entitled to you to most things. Strategy 16, changing child's name to remove association with targeted parents. Uh, yeah, this is quite a common one as well. Um, so sometimes I'll do this in school. So they won't necessarily legally change their name, but they might go into school and say, oh, then they were then uh, they're now going to be called different surname. There's no legal. To, to be fair, most schools should not accept that because it's not legally. Um, it's not a legal name change, but schools do. Um, and it's hard for children as well if they're the ones that are going in with that message that my name is now and then the t schools are not prepared to do it. It causes difficulty. So it is something that um, that they do try and do, try and sneak under the radar. So again, three pronged approach. Have it into your legal documents that in each parent is required to refer to the child by their legal name. So whatever it is on there birth certificate um again and then obviously you can remind the alienating parent of that fact equally you can give those documents to school doctors whoever to say this is legally their name 
okay this is what we've, we've agreed they will be referred to um to the child you can say it must be confusing for you to have your parents refer to you with different names how can i help you to use your real name so it's not so confusing for you and everyone else so again it's reconfirming what their actual name is acknowledging that they probably are feeling quite confused by this situation and showing that you want to be able to help and the final one which is the one of the most important strategies as far as i'm concerned when dealing with alienation and obviously when you've got still got contact with your children is to develop their independence narcissists nurture codependence you know that because you've been in that relationship they want you to do everything that they want they want you to meet all of their needs they want you to become totally dependent upon meeting their needs hence the codependency and they want your they wanted your identity to be so caught up in meeting their needs that you would never leave and that's what they do with their children they want their children to become so dependent upon meeting the their needs that they won't ever leave them so that they can maintain that enmeshed relationship and so you can do the independence work you can train them you can give them options so rather than just telling them what what they've got to do give them choices now obviously with kids sometimes you've got to narrow the choices down so you give them options rather than a full array but where possible give them that full choice you know give them as many choices as they can because you want to create independent thinking for starters clothing let them choose what they want to wear even if they it's crazy let them wear it let them be independent let them celebrate themselves um just nurture that independence because in a normal family cycle independence leads to new relationship leads to creating children and culture within their own family adopting values raising children in some of the ways that they've been taught some of the ways that they've decided that they don't like from their own childhood and the, or they're going to merge with their partner's way of raising children and then when the children get older they go independent and they start their own family cycle well the narcissist doesn't want any of that narcissist doesn't want any of that independence they don't ever want them to leave and go off and create their own cycle because that will mean that they have abandoned even if they have new supply and all of those things they really struggle with abandonment because it makes them feel less so any of those transitions are going to be difficult for them anyway so you've got to encourage them to take the, your children to encourage to encourage your children to take those opportunities to be independent to choose their own friendships to choose what subjects they're going to do for gcses and a levels make sure that they are making those decisions themselves without influence have conversations with them ask them what do they want you know always be asking them to hear their voice to find out what they want and where possible always support them with those decisions that independence is what is going to save them because like i said the narcissist is trying to pull them into codependency so even if they manage to escape they will find a relationship that is codependent and so you've got to, you know, this independence that you want to nurture in them is what can help them moving forward into their own family cycle. So then they meet someone and they are independent in how they raise their children and, and they meet someone who is equally independent and they don't form a toxic codependent relationship. So there you go. Those are the 17 strategies and end of part two any questions i'm aware i have raced through a lot of that but i just want to share it with you and i hope that you found value in it like i say if you have any questions fire away ask ask me um i will upload this video to youtube next week so that it's there forever um but yeah they, your names won't be visible by the way just in case you're worried about that they won't be visible um it'll just be me so 
yeah, any questions on what I've said? Any questions around alienation tactics? Um, any further videos you'd like me to cover in the future? Then just let me know. I'll give you a few minutes before I go because I'm sweltering. I woke up this morning and it was really dark and great and miserable. And uh, so I put my Christmas jumper on. <laughs> I thought I might as well get some use out of it. So, yeah, I've got my Christmas jumper on and I'm really hot and sweaty because it's actually really sunny and really hot now. So, uh, yeah, anyway, you probably didn't want to know that, but there you go. I might delete that before I put it on YouTube. So, yeah, any questions? Any questions at all? I can't see any at the moment. Amy Baker, for those of you that don't know, this is that it's her strategies that I've been sharing with you. She's one of the world's leading experts in parental alienation. She's done a lot of research, particularly with adult children who have been alienated. So she's asked them, what 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 did you need at that time? Looked looked at outcomes for alienated children. So it's really valuable the work that she's done. Um, very very accurate. Um. So I hope you got a lot of value out of it. I, I can't share the document with you, so that was the best thing I could do. So there's no questions coming up, so I'm going to um, call it a day. I hope that you have found these two videos really useful. Um, I recommend watching them on replay, taking your own notes, um, picking out the ones that are happening for you in your situation, and... Just trying them out. Give them a go. Be consistent. Just remember that it's always got to be child focused. This is all about protecting the child from the behaviours of the narcissist. Okay. So take care, everyone. Have a really good day. Like I say, let me know what you'd like me to cover next week. Um, and yeah, have a good one. Take care.